Dr. Gebhardt insisted on coming along, but now he doesn't seem to be sure if that was a good idea. Are you okay, Doctor? Oh, of course. Why wouldn't I be? It's just that... Well, I would prefer to come with you. You heard the inspector. I'm not going on a manhunt all by myself. Are you okay? Maybe you had better take a rest, in case the blow was more severe. I'm okay. Down there! Up here! Come on! I think it came from up there. Sure, you just wanted to get a breath of fresh air. Zerner, look who we have here. Well, if that's not our shadow. And our stowaway. Spend any time hiding in a trunk recently? Uh, me do, do nothing. He claims to be part of the crew. Just wanted to get some fresh air. Of course. The Baroness won't open the door, sir. Understood. Take him to the detention cell, Robert. You were right. There was a stone. Yes, but he can't be the Raven. He's too young. Right, but that doesn't mean that the Raven isn't lurking here as well. What was that? A shot! It came from one of the cabins. Oh no! Baroness von Trebitz? Baroness! Open the door! Step aside, please. We have a murder on our hands, gentlemen. Hurry, Zellner. The murderer still has to be nearby. There is practically no one on deck. Anyone who's outside is a suspect. This time, we'll get him. Zellner, are you okay? Yes. Come on. We have to... Zellner! Zellner! Merda! Ah, you awake? Sleep well, did you? I like to sleep late when I take a cruise. While everyone else is hard at work. Have you arrested anyone yet? You mean besides the Arab? He could hardly have committed the murder. 
You must have been with him when it happened. We heard the shot on the forecastle. I locked our friend in the detention cell in the cargo hold, and then went up to assist Legrand. You were already sleeping the sleep of the just. Any other suspects? No. Seconds after the alarm went off, the decks were swarming with frightened passengers. Hmm. Yes. A clever way to stay incognito during the commotion. Hmm. But we still have our primary suspect, the Raven. You really think he's returned? Well, I think that no one knows as much about the Raven as Legrand. But still, it all seems so incredible. I didn't pass out last night because of the blow to my head, did I? Seems unlikely. Inspector Legrand thinks you were drugged. But how? The champagne. Who gave you the glass of champagne? Hmm. Captain De Conti. Interesting. It should be possible to find traces of the tranquilizer in the glass. That is exactly what Legrand is trying to do. Without a laboratory? Oh, he's got a lab. His cabin is packed with all the latest forensic stuff. It's quite impressive what the inspector can do. A competent man, no doubt. And surprisingly well prepared. And diligent. He's been at it all night with his brushes and tinctures and glasses and everything. Working like a man possessed. I wouldn't want to be the Raven now. What's the state of play? How was the Baroness killed? Uh, the Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We'll know more once the doc finishes examining the body in the medical center. And no one saw anything suspicious? <laughs> no one saw a shadowy raven leaving the Baroness's cabin, if that's what you mean. A lot of people heard the gunshot. Inspector Legrand wants to question the passengers again this morning, once they've all calmed down, and he's had a chance to examine the evidence. I suppose that you and Legrand inspected the crime scene and the surroundings. Of course. And we already hit the jackpot. The murder weapon. Really? Where did you find it? On the gangway. The gangway for boarding the ship folds up and hooks onto the hull when it's not being used. The murderer probably wanted to throw the gun into the sea. He casually dropped it overboard. But it landed on the gangway. Bad luck. But Legrand and I were on the side deck right after the shot. There was no one there. Hmm. Maybe the murderer threw the gun away later. We recovered it in the early hours. Hmm. I think I'll look for Inspector Legrand now. Hmm. Do what you think's best. You won't get rid of me. I'm here to stay, Constable Oliver. Be that as it may. Inspector Legrand ordered me to guard the cargo hold with our special guest. That's fine by me. Inspector Legrand may be able to get by without sleep for days on end, but not me. It's not easy playing with the big boys, Constable Zelna. No, it certainly isn't. An antique wooden globe. If Galileo hadn't asserted himself back then, this would be a flat disk now. was sealed. I'm pretty sure the seal doesn't have any legal relevance here on the open sea, but I'm still dependent on Legrand letting me join his team. I better not blow it by breaking his seal without permission. plan? And some tips from the doctor for avoiding seasickness, sunburn and the like. And here, a schedule of activities. A drink with the captain, a shuffleboard competition on the forecastle, 
And that's about it. A real barrel of fun. An alarm like this one was set off yesterday. Mm. This one hasn't been set off. The security seal is intact. I'm not paying for this trip, and that's a fair price for my cabin. It's rather... plain, shall we say. Come in. Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. And there's the next one. Excuse me? You want something else from me, don't you? I'm afraid I do. What a first day at work. Well... What's the result of your examination of the victim? She's dead. I didn't make you work all night long, Dr. Gebhardt. <sighs> she was shot. Point-blank shot. Probably with a pistol. It seems like she was lying in bed. The shot struck her heart. She died immediately. One shot? More were unnecessary. And we only heard one shot, no? And there's just one entrance wound. Just one. I am told that I was drugged. That's how it seems. What can you tell me about it? Me? Why should that be my business? Haven't you analyzed the glass? No, I haven't. The inspector said he's the better chemist. I let him do it. That way I could at least concentrate on the body. Do you think the Baroness might have been drugged? She was very tired and unsteady when Legrand and I saw her. Yeah, I heard about that. I must have just missed her in the saloon. And without having seen her myself, it is hard to make a diagnosis. Of course. Can you say something about her general health? She was quite overweight, and the butler said that she suffered from diabetes. Despite that, she hadn't visited a doctor for several years. Doesn't sound good. Happens more frequently than you might suppose. Some people are scared of doctors <laughs> and pay with an early death. It is possible that the Baroness wouldn't have lived much longer anyway. Do you know whose glass I drank from? What do you mean? Captain de Conti handed me a glass of champagne. But where did he get it? I... don't know. Did you ask him? I'm just asking because you were also in the saloon when the champagne was served. Yes, but I only entered the saloon a few seconds before you did. I didn't manage to get a drink myself. Which, in retrospect, is lucky. Ah. You're right about that. Have you already removed the bullet? Did Legrand send you? What is that Frenchman's problem? I already told you. I will get in touch as soon as I have it. That is also what I told the constable, who he kept sending all night long, once I finally got rid of Legrand himself. Did he look over your shoulder? He probably wanted to take the scalpel from my hand and hack away himself. But this is my surgery and I will not let amateurs interfere with my work. That's understandable. How much longer will it take? Ugh. I have just finished. Send my regards to His Majesty. Thanks. I think that's it for now. No. That is it for now, then, and later. I'm going to lie down for a few hours. Can you tell that to your boss? But... Could I at least have the key? Absolutely not. But if we have to examine the victim again... Then the esteemed inspector knows where to find me. In my cabin. In bed. Good night, Constable Zellner.
We're lucky that the Lydia has a well-stocked medical center at its disposal. I suppose it was added during the war. A ship of this size wouldn't normally have a full medical center. Neither Dr. Gebhardt nor Constable Oliver can keep up with Legrand's pace, but in contrast to good old Robert, the doctor doesn't let himself get roped in for the long haul. I wonder what would happen if Legrand dragged him out of bed for another investigation. No, I've slept enough. That is Legrand's cabin. Come in. Ah, Zone, are you ready? Good morning, Inspector Legrand. Uh, my head is pounding, but I think I'm okay. Chloral hydrate. Hmm? That's why you have a headache. I found traces of it in your champagne glass. What have you found out so far? The Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We heard the shot. The murderer quickly fled the cabin and dropped the murder weapon over the railing later. A simple story so far. But why was her cabin door locked? Exactly. If the murderer wanted to make it seem like a suicide, he'd have shot her in the head and left the gun at the crime scene. And if it was murder, why did he go to all the trouble of locking the door from inside? And how did he manage that anyway? Especially since we arrived just a few seconds later and didn't see anyone near the cabin. Something doesn't make sense here. No, it doesn't, and it's driving me crazy. Did you find the murder weapon? On the gangway on the side of the ship. I suspect the murderer tried to drop it into the sea. He would have stood close to the railing to let it fall unseen. And since he doesn't know the ship, he had bad luck and dropped it right onto the gangway. Indeed. And do you find that probable? Not a bit. Neither do I. What kind of a gun is it? A pistol. A Luger 08. Antique. Manufactured a million times during and after the First World War. Austrian model. The owner is David Kreitzer, the violinist. We found him tonight totally drunk on the bow of the ship. He confirmed that it's his gun, but he claims that it was stolen from him. Fingerprints? Nothing. But it's worth mentioning that the clip was missing two bullets. Hmm. And it's definitely the murder weapon. The ballistic tests are incomplete. Actually, I've been waiting far too long for the bullet recovered from the corpse. Pay the good doctor a visit, Zellner, and see that he does his job. About the bullet. Here it is. Excellent. Give it to me. As I suspected. A 7.65 Parabellum Luger. Don't you want to examine it in more detail? When I have time. For now, though, we can assume that we have the murder weapon. There can't be too many antique Luger 08 pistols on board. May I take a look at the Baroness's cabin? We already searched it thoroughly. Sure. But what about now, by daylight? Yes, yes, fine, it can't hurt. Here, take this with you. Thanks. I'll let you know if I find anything important. But only then, please. I'm very busy. Of course. Do you believe the violinist? He'll be the first person I question. He claims he can't remember anything from the last few hours. Says he drank a bottle of schnapps. He was on the train, and he doesn't have an alibi. His drunkenness could be a smokescreen. He fits the profile. He travels a lot, has access to high society. Could be interesting. And this chloral hydrate? Is a tranquilizer. Can be dissolved in alcohol. The effect begins in minutes and lasts for hours. Who gave you the glass of champagne? I believe it was Captain De Conti. If believing were enough for us, we'd have become priests, Constable. Be a policeman and find out for sure. Understood. You think that the jewel thief is the murderer? 
Our friend would have needed another key to open the safe and steal the second eye. The one the Baroness was carrying. At least, that's what we implied. What do you mean? The Baroness was famous for her forgetfulness. I convinced her to give me the third key. It seemed safer for the eye. The thief searches the Baroness's cabin, looking for the third key. She returns from the saloon earlier than expected, surprises him, and he can't allow her to identify him. He imprisons her until the coast is clear, and then shoots her. And thus, the thief becomes a murderer. But still doesn't have all the keys. Are you sure that there's no bomb inside this time? Professor Lucien locked it in front of an audience, and it will be opened for the first time in Cairo. Let's hope so. It would take hours to crack it, and you'd need heavy machinery. Or the keys. Or the three keys, that's right. Do you think... Do you really think that the Raven is behind all this? He wrote the letter that was on the safe in the train. Without the letter, we wouldn't have opened the safe, and the bomb wouldn't have exploded. But it doesn't seem like him, does it? The Raven was famous in part because he never hurt anyone, much less killed anyone, during a burglary. It's his handwriting, and he called me Nico. No one else does that. I've chased that man across Europe for years. It is him. It has to be him. But the evidence... Enough. I'll be on my way. I want to find out who gave me the drug champagne. Good idea. Inspector Legrand, are you okay? Maybe you should take a break. I can sleep once I've caught the raven. Goodbye, Constable. Be seeing you. Legrand is risking not just his career, but his health as well on his hunt for the Raven. He's working like a demon. Maybe that's why he caught the Raven and no one else. model of the Lydia before it was rebuilt. It used to be a freighter. The wide hallways, the cabins, and the saloon were added later. Alcoholic drinks and everything that goes with them is top-notch on this ship. Fresh ice and tongs. Hmm. They could be useful. Constable Zelda, what is the meaning of this? Are even the police light-fingered nowadays? I need this tool for a criminal investigation. Well, then, why didn't you say so? So, how are you getting along? Can I be of any help? Actually, you could answer a few questions. What was your experience of last night? Oh, terrible. Dinner was fantastic. Everyone was excited about having a pleasant drink under the stars. And then this. You were in the saloon all night long. Yes, the captain. I have to care for my passengers. After you and the others crashed out, I tried to maintain a festive atmosphere. <laughs> but when the alarm it goes off, I lose the battle. <laughs> 
Did everyone drink from the same bottle of champagne last night? There was more than one bottle, if that's what you mean. There were quite a few guests, and the event lasted several hours. The last bottle of champagne, the one the Baroness drank from, did anyone else drink from it? Certainly. We have reason to believe that the champagne was drugged. Incredible. But wouldn't that have made everyone drowsy? Not if it was only the Baroness's glass that was drugged. I see. That's possible. On a night like that, many glasses are filled and emptied. There are several stewards, many guests. No one keeps track of every glass and every bottle. A few drops in a glass? Yes, it's certainly possible. How was the Baroness? She really surprised me. After she was so unapproachable at the reception and didn't show her face for the entire afternoon, I was afraid she was one of the bores and bourgeoisie. But then she arrived in the early evening in the best of moods. Already had a few, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did she say anything to you? She asked me where Legrand's cabin was. I told her, then invited her to come for drinks in the evening. I said it would be great fun. The whole ship will be there, and you don't want to miss that, I told her. And then? She seemed to like the idea. She smiled, and then left again for a few minutes. Then she came back and seemed very happy. We drank a toast to life. But at some point, she didn't feel well anymore? She overdid it a bit. She suddenly started to swoon and almost spilled her drink. I asked her if she wanted to rest for a moment in her cabin. At first, she didn't want to. She definitely wanted to stay in the saloon. But then she realized that she really did need to lie down. We left together. You know the rest of the story. The glass you handed me last night, where did you get it? Ah, I understand. You think your glass was poisoned as well? Did you pour it yourself? No. I saw that you weren't doing so well and wanted to rescue the situation. I took the first available glass and I give it to you. Was it on the table? No, I hurry over to you, together with Dr. Gebhardt, who... Of course, he had the glass in his hand. He was looking around for a place to set it down so that he could examine you. I took it from him. And gave it to me. I'd like to apologize for that, but you look so worse for the wear, and I just wanted to comfort you. I didn't think of looking for a new glass for you. Hmm. So the doctor had the drugged glass in his hand. Is it possible to find out where the alarm was set off? I'm afraid not. There are alarms all over the ship. I saw that they're sealed. Can't we just check whether the seal is broken? I'm afraid they're gonna be missing on a lot of alarms. You know, this is an old ship and over the years... So, you're saying that the alarms haven't been regularly maintained? I'll inform the crew immediately, of course. Of course. What can you tell me about the passengers? Oh, not that much, I'm afraid. I wanted to get to know them properly at the reception. In most cases, I just shook hands with them as they boarded the ship. There are a few regulars on board, and after dinner, I had a conversation with Mr. Kreutzer, a talented violinist, and Lady Westmacott. But you already know them from the train. It seems like there aren't that many passengers on board. These bloody airplanes are making our lives miserable. Can you imagine? Grown men prefer to jam themselves into a narrow metal coffins instead of enjoying the fresh sea air on a ship. It's all about saving time. It shouldn't be about how much time it takes to get from A to B, but about how you spend that time. What do you experience on the journey? That's what it's about. I'll get back to my investigations now. Ciao, Constable. Captain De Conti is sitting at the bar again. He gave me the glass of champagne last night.
Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird, but maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. Lady Westmacott, already on your f Oh. Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No, I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary or the murder. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone, or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone, but who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues. That's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered, but if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused. I had a chat with him yesterday, and he impressed me, but there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zelna. Of course. How wonderful. Sunshine and a blue sky above the Mediterranean Sea. It would be a perfect cruise day, if not for the murder. The ship must have been rebuilt at some point. I'm sure it didn't originally have such a modern glass roof.
This is the first murder scene I've ever set foot in. Hmm. There should be a ventilation shaft behind the hatch. Usually a good way to break in and out undetected. But we're on a ship. The ventilation shafts are very small here. The most unportable portmanteau I've ever seen. A portable bar is more like it. Must be hard work transporting this big, heavy thing halfway around the globe. And the Baroness was lucky that the other freight cars were only lightly damaged by their explosion. Another alarm. It was tripped at some point. The seal is broken. But there's no way of telling whether it happened yesterday or five years ago. Hmm. The notepad has the ship's emblem on it. I suppose all the first-class cabins have them. It says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board and I will expose him. B. The Baroness seems to have known the murderer. And that means that the Raven can't be the murderer. He never killed anybody. Legrand probably never got the message. Otherwise, he'd have said something. The door frame was damaged when Dr. Gebhardt kicked it in. The real question is, why was the door locked in the first place? The mannequin surely came with the cabin. A mannequin for the Baroness's clothes would have a more generous figure. Sunflowers, by Van Gogh, I presume. He liked to paint that sort of thing. Can't be an original. They cost thousands of francs. A big, ugly, and impractical vase. If it had a wider opening, one could at least use it as an umbrella stand. Hmm. can't see anything. Wow, heavier than it looks. Aha! Hmm, nothing special, although it seems like one of the feathers was scorched at the top, literally burnt. I'd better take it with me. Something's under there. More feathers. And they're singed as well. 
I'll put them with the others. There's still blood on the mattress. The sheet and the blanket have already been removed. To analyze them, I suppose. Nothing. The blood spot is the only sign that someone committed a crime in here. Hmm. Somehow... That's odd. The blood is so... red. Shouldn't it gradually darken in the air? Turn brown? Hmm, a tape recorder. Must go with the built-in speakers. Probably part of the cabin's furnishings. The tape recorder is older than the hills, but it was once very expensive. Top of the range. And it doesn't come cheap. Hmm, strange. There's only one reel. And it's the wrong one. No. No sign of the original reel. A reel made by Zeibling. I know the brand. Zeibling's tapes can be overwritten many times without losing quality. They're used in offices so that executives can record messages for the secretaries on the same tape over and over again. But they're not good for much else. They're robust, but they don't offer much in terms of sound quality. The portholes face the side deck. If someone climbed out of the cabin through a porthole, Legrand and I would have seen them. Hmm. The portholes are locked. One cannot open or close them from outside. It's the same problem as with the door. If someone left the cabin through the porthole, how did they lock it? And the Baroness wasn't shot from outside. The doctor said she was shot at close range. Apparently, the Baroness didn't have time to unpack her bags. Or rather, didn't have time to tell her butler to unpack them for her. Hmm, sifting through all that would take ages. But here, the Baroness's handbag. Aha! A small leather-bound book. 1964 is engraved on it. This must be the Baroness's diary. Cosmetics, a handkerchief, a spectacles case, nothing special. Let's see. Yes, it's a diary, all right. Difficult to read. No entry from yesterday. A brief, sober description of what she's done recently. Met Morris. Arranged benefit concert for renovation of Louvre Southeastern Wing. Times photo shoot for Eye of Sphinx. BM, poor excuse for photographer. Too fidgety. And so on. Hmm. This entry looks strange. The handwriting is shaky. Difficult to read. Dreamt of Bobby. Yesterday would have been his birthday. Next week, Jay's. Hmm.
I can't say why, and it seems impossible, but something tells me that the murderer entered and left the cabin through the door. The only question is how. Hmm. Assuming the murderer isn't a magician, and the Baroness locked the door herself before she went to bed, the murderer couldn't have left the cabin through the door. So, the murderer must have still been in here when Dr. Gebhardt kicked the door in. Which is unlikely, because someone would have seen him, or he found another way out of the cabin. An impressive piece, but I... The Baroness's butler looks like he didn't get much sleep. I would describe his facial expression as worried. Hello, Mr. Inch. Oh, Constable, hello. You look the worse for wear. It must be terrible for you. Quite terrible. No one will hire me now. Uh, excuse me? My mistress was murdered. Would you hire a butler who's been mixed up in a murder? But if it turns out that you're not guilty... If? But what? If not, who else would they blame? There are no gardeners on this ship. <laughs> I understand your problem. Under these circumstances, I'm sure you'd answer some questions that could help clear your name, wouldn't you? Of course. Did you notice anything suspicious last night? No, sir. After the Baroness went to the saloon, I went to the forecastle. I was there until the alarm went off. I went to the side deck and arrived shortly after Professor Lucian and Miss Miller. We found you and Inspector Legrand there. You were unconscious, and the inspector asked us to take care of you. Did you hear the gunshot? No, just the alarm, sir. You said you were on the forecastle. It sounded like the Baroness let you have the rest of the night off. Not entirely, sir. One of the crew informed me that the Baroness wanted to be roused at quarter to ten. Right. Why was that? I suppose that she wanted to toast the success of the journey with the captain and the other passengers. She hadn't intended to take a nap, then? That was not her way, sir. She had a lot of... Spirit, shall we say, when it came to social engagements and a glass or two of champagne. The Baroness's cabin seems to have been ransacked. Indeed, sir, by the Baroness herself. Really? She was searching for something the entire afternoon. And did she find it? I think she did, sir, yes. She was in high spirits when she finally left her cabin. You wouldn't happen to know what she was looking for, would you? I'm afraid not. Would you describe the Baroness as orderly? Uh, well, she... She always had a lot of responsibilities, sir. That doesn't answer my question. She used to take a lot of luggage on journeys, and I helped her keep track of it as best I could. She was always very angry when she couldn't find something. What about the photos and the documents I saw in her cabin? I really don't know. They were out of bounds to me, sir. Memories from the war, I'd say. They meant a lot to her. The Baroness seemed to be pretty drunk the last time I saw her. Is that so? Does that surprise you? Did the Baroness not drink? Oh, yes, she drank. It was no secret. I understand. How serious was her habit? Serious enough, sir. Was she under any medical supervision? Certainly not, sir. She adamantly refused to see a doctor. Like so many elderly women, she had a distinct aversion. 
to hospitals and the like. How long had you worked for the Baroness? Six months, sir. Only six months? I always thought that butlers stayed with their employers for decades. Those decades have to start at some point, Constable. Her former butler wasn't able to fulfill his duties any longer. Gout, sir. I understand. I took on his duties and hoped for a secure position for the next 20 years. May I ask what happened to your arm? A souvenir from the war, sir. Doesn't it hinder your work? Yes, sir. Obviously. I didn't mean to offend you. The Baroness had a soft spot for disabled veterans. I think she'd been through a lot herself. I think that's all for now. Please, sir. Find the murderer. You have to clear me of all suspicion. Curious. One can easily toss a gun into the sea from almost anywhere on the ship without being noticed. And yet, the murderer chose the one spot where it's not actually possible. I suppose the life jackets are stowed there, close to the railing, close at hand in case of emergency. Constable Oliver brought something to drink. You can tell it's not the first time he's had to guard something. It may not seem like it, but Constable Oliver is actually a very effective watchman. Ahem. <coughs> uh, 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 what's going on? The raven just flew by. What? Or at least, he might as well have. Uh, I wasn't asleep. I understand. It was just a ruse. Any conclusions about a young stowaway? Uh, he's a bit suspicious. Foreign and whatnot. I see. Did he act suspiciously in any way? No. The shot surprised him as much as it did me. Looked in on him earlier. Still seems to be asleep. Covered with a blanket from head to toe? Oh, oh. he's still in there. I poked him. May I go downstairs and have a couple of words with our guest? No, you may not. Come again? Inspector Legrand wants to conduct all the interrogations himself. I'm sure he'll understand if I form my own conclusions. He ordered me to guard the door, and that's just what I'm going to do. How about a bit of individual initiative? How about letting a man do his job? Or do you think you'd be better at it? What do you think? What happened here last night? The Raven broke into the Baroness's cabin, she surprised him, and he shot her. What was he looking for in her cabin? She was a rich woman. He didn't want to steal her purse. He wanted the third key. Mm. So Legrand also told you about that. Mm. Why did he lock the door? <laughs> Why not? From inside? An impressive trick. I'm not saying I know how he did it. I'm just saying that it was him. Why didn't he leave a Raven feather? Are you serious? We'd have suspected him straight away. But fortunately, we still did. Let's assume that the old Raven really has returned and that he really is responsible for all this. Who is he? Or she? Oh, could be anyone. No one's ever seen the Raven. He could also be paying someone else to do his dirty work. Well, of course. Uh, it's a fact that they used to work with partners. They even arrested some of his accomplices. But no one could ever identify the Raven himself. Some claims that they didn't even know that they were working for him. Fascinating. He could have hired someone with financial difficulties to set off the alarm at a certain time without that person knowing why they were doing it. The man Legrand shot back then. He was a famous safecracker. He could just as well have been a henchman. Or the real Raven. 
There's probably no better cover for a big thief than acting like a small one. I don't want to keep you from your duties any longer. Good idea. The stowaway surely didn't sleep well last night in the cargo hold. Although his cell is probably more comfortable than my cabin, and more spacious. I wonder if this game is an advanced version of Bocce. Maybe the inventor realized that it's difficult to play ball games on a boat and came up with an alternative. Salty sea air in my old lungs, wind in my thinning hair. If I hadn't become a policeman, I could have been a sailor. We were here yesterday when we heard the shot, and it was also here where Legrand caught our stowaway. Hmm. The grate must be part of the ship's ventilation system. Nothing out of the ordinary. This isn't a panoramic deck for visitors. There are pipes, steel cables, chains up here. You can smell the smoke from the funnel. I have no idea how the ship works, and I really don't care, as long as it stays afloat. Why is there an axe hanging here? Hmm. I suppose it's for chopping through ropes in the event that the lifeboats can't be lowered, or they use it to enforce who's allowed on the boat and who's not. There's dirt piled up in the corner. Down below, where the passengers are, the ship is pretty clean. But the crew doesn't seem to care as much up here. The ship's bridge. Two men. One of them navigating. I get the impression that the officers keep things running. It seems like the captain concentrates on the passengers and the bar. It shouldn't be so easy to open. Did the stowaway open it and we caught him in the act? Hmm, no. The pipe is too narrow. He wouldn't fit in there. I guess the cover has been defective for a while. Hmm, a boat like this would also make a good hideout for a stowaway. Were the tarpaulins arranged like that on purpose so that no one could put them back in order once they get in? You can tell at a glance that everything is ship-shape with this boat.
I'd really like to lie in the sun and take a nap. But I don't have time for that at the moment. No, Jacob. Business before pleasure. Did Edison have any idea what would become of his invention? Big, soft towels. I could reserve a deck chair with it. No, better not. These things made quite a racket last night. I couldn't hear myself think. Come in. Constable. About the tranquilizer. Who gave you the glass of champagne? It was Captain De Conti. You're sure? He doesn't deny it, but he also says that the glasses passed through many hands that night and that everyone had access to the champagne. So it could have been anyone. Maybe the question isn't who put the poison in the glass, but rather who it was they wanted to poison. Smart. And who were they trying to poison? Dr. Gebhardt? The captain got the glass from him. Hmm. An unconscious ship's doctor. That sounds like it would be more used to a murderer than a drugged constable. You think so? Did the murderer have reason to assume that his shot might not kill the victim immediately and, and that Dr. Gebhardt would be able to save her? You're right. That's improbable. <laughs> My ego is just searching for reasons for them to want to kill her and not me. Good job, Zelda. I found feathers in the Baroness's cabin. Really? Yes. They were in a vase next to the door. I hope this is leading up to some information that justifies this interruption. Some of the feathers are singed. Hmm, show me. Well, you may have something here. I think that someone fired a shot through a pillow or something like that, and the muzzle flash scorched the down. Yes, possible. Try to find the pillow and we'll take it from there. I took a closer look at the blood spot from the Baroness's bed. Yes, what's wrong with it? It looks... odd. Odd? I think it should be darker. I understand. The iron in blood causes it to darken the longer it's exposed to the air. Right. And... We don't have time to waste. Dr. Kebat examined the body thoroughly. He would have noticed if anything was wrong. And you trust Dr. Gebhardt completely? I trust everyone as much as is advisable. There will be a complete autopsy in Cairo. Until then, the doctor is one of the few people on board who is not a suspect. You, him, the stowaway, Constable Oliver, and I all have alibis. There are still enough suspects left. I was able to make the traces of a note on the Baroness's notepad legible. She wrote that a murderer is on board and that she'll unmask him. She asks the recipient to meet her in the saloon at 10 p.m. If we can find the recipient... I was the recipient. Monsieur? When I entered my cabin last night, I found a message on the floor. Someone must have slipped it under the door. Why didn't you say anything about it? I didn't know that I was obliged to. We are partners. Not really. You're helping me out until we reach Cairo, because you somehow managed to remain on board. But... 
I'll choose when and with whom I share information. You can accept that and continue assisting me, or you can spend the rest of the journey on a deck chair thinking about missed opportunities. And none of this is by any chance related to the fact that the message doesn't suit your raven theory. The Baroness knew the murderer from the past, and he was already a murderer when he boarded the ship. The Raven was always just a thief, not a murderer. Careful, Constable. Are you accusing me of perverting the facts? Of course not, Monsieur. Then let's get back to work. Good day, Constable. I'll be in touch if I uncover more clues. Very well. Dr. Gebhardt closed the curtains from inside, which was the right thing to do. Who'd want to be greeted by a corpse on the way to breakfast? Dr. Gebhardt locked the door, and something tells me that he... A pitiful attempt to make the interior of the ship seem less dreary. A bit of paint on the walls would have helped more, especially since a plant won't survive long without daylight. Hmm. There are little stones in the flower pot. Not only does the poor plant have to make do without sunlight, it doesn't have any soil either. Really? What am I supposed to do with stones? Although, sooner or later... The Baroness was a very busy woman, and it looks like she had to cope with loss. She writes about Bubby and Jay. Neither seem to be alive anymore. Almost every family lost loved ones in the war. Maybe hers as well. I'll leave it there. I don't have time to read all of it.
Captain De Conti is sitting at the bar again. I believe I've got everything I can. I guess I'll st whatever his story. I shouldn't bother her until her mind is still wrong. Why were the down feathers tossed in the vase? Or is there anything else in there? There may be something else in the vase, but the neck is too narrow to reach in with my hand. Could work. There's something in there. Ah. Someone stuffed this in the vase. <whistles> Looks like it's been used to muffle a gunshot. If this isn't an important discovery, I don't know what is. Legrand, here I come. I don't care what Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt say. The blood spot looks strange, and I'd like to take a sample. Maybe I'll get the chance to analyze it. I don't care what Legrand... Maybe I'll... What a discovery. This... Legrand... A singed pillowcase is proof that there must have been a second gunshot. 
In Hector? Can't you knock? I uh, didn't realize. I'm really. I. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to question each passenger individually. Anyone without an airtight alibi will be checked for gunshot residue. But, Inspector. People trip up when you put pressure on them, Constable Zellner. The Raven is nervous. He's changed his methodology and become a murderer. I'll see it in his eyes. After you. But, Inspector Legrand... We have no proof that the Raven and the murderer are the same person. Quite the opposite. The Baroness's message hints at the fact that she knew the murderer and that he'd killed before. You may not know it, but I do. I will catch him with or without your help. I don't believe it. What's gotten into him? Oh, well. It makes no sense to tell him about my theories if his opinion is already set. I need evidence. Or better yet, the murderer. I also need his lab if I'm going to get anywhere. I need to get in there somehow. And I really need to talk to the stowaway. He may have information, and the inspector will just ignore him since he's too young to be the raven. The Grand locked the door. The lock isn't especially secure. If I had a wire or something like that, I could probably pick it. Dr. Gebhardt locked the door. Something tells... Mr. Kreitzer, come on, you have to give me a bit more. You're the only one who was on the train and who has no alibi for last night. As I said, I was in my cabin. Are you sure that it was your cabin and not the Baroness's? Legrand will question the guests, one after another. But if he doesn't get the answers that he wants to hear, it could become unpleasant for them. advantage on an international trip is the international breakfast. Many of my fellow countrymen think it's outrageous to eat fried bacon, sausages, or, or anything heavy for breakfast. I, on the other hand, think ham and eggs are the only worthwhile contribution the English have made to international cuisine. Excellent. Ah, that's just what I needed. Coffee is not bad at all, but one cup is enough. It's not fair. There's a magnificent buffet, but I don't have an appetite. Maybe a side effect of the tranquilizer.
Lady Westmacott, may I bother you for a moment? By all means, Mr. Zellner. How is the questioning going? Are you implying that I'm an eavesdropper? The inspector is placing a lot of pressure on our dear Mr. Kreutzer. He's the only one who was on the train and who doesn't have an alibi for last night. Perhaps. But him? A murderer? I know people like him. He doesn't have enough backbone to kill someone in cold blood and remain so calm. He'd turn it into a drama and then a farce, drink himself insensible, and then, railing at fate, pitch himself into the sea. Forget him. Legrand is wasting his time. Mr. Kreutzer just happens to be a perfect fit for the inspector's image of the Raven. Athletic, cultured, moves among the rich and famous. I'll eat his violin if he's the Raven or the murderer. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zelna. Of course. Legrand is absorbed in the interrogation. He still seems pretty annoyed. The violinist seems to be bearing the brunt of it. Mr. Kreutzer clearly feels uneasy. But does Legrand actually think he's the Raven? Captain De Conti seems old and tired. The price you pay for a life like his, I suppose. I believe I've got everything I can out of him. Miss Mayer seems to have found an opportunity to do nothing. Hello, Miss Mayers. Hello, Mr. Uh, Constable Zelda. Do you think it's appropriate to go sunbathing in a situation like this? What situation? A woman was murdered last night. If refusing to sunbathe could bring the dead back to life, I'd go back to my cabin immediately. Did you hear or see anything suspicious last night? No, I didn't feel very well last night. I went to bed early. So, you're feeling better this morning? Thanks for asking. I'm sure your parents are truly sorry that they can't be with you at this difficult time. Maybe, but I'm not a little girl anymore, and thinking about my fiancé keeps me going. You... you're engaged? Yes. My boyfriend and I got engaged right before the trip. I want to surprise my parents, especially my dad. I'm sure he'll be very surprised. But what will you do if your father doesn't agree to the engagement? What choice does he have? when he put me on this boat full of thieves and murderers in the first place. Charming. Enjoy the sun, Miss Mayers, and don't let us disturb you. If you're trying to make me feel guilty, Constable, it's not working. is keeping himself busy with that strange game. He seems to be okay again, but I think he'd be running around all over the place if he'd really come to terms with what happened on the train. Hello there, partner. Hi. Are you all right? Uh-huh. Have you recovered from our adventure? Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Zellner. Hmm? What's going on? What do you mean? Everybody's acting so strange, and there's tape across that door. I saw that in a movie once. You don't have to be worried. Is it about the man from the train? It might be about the thief, yes. Haven't you caught him yet? I'm working on it. Okay. 
I heard you and your mom used to argue a lot. We did. Everything was bad. The house, school, the other kids. We didn't have much money, and I was always alone. You do know that your mother would love to have been with you, don't you? She had to go out to work to earn money. She wouldn't have had to if Dad were still around. Mm. And how do you get along with her now? I'm always happy when we do something together on vacation. She has more time for me now, and I like my boarding school. I have lots of friends, and the teachers aren't so bad. Your mother and Professor Lucien seem to be on very good terms with each other. Mm. Don't you like him? Don't know. He seems to be very nice. I guess. Lady Westmacott is all by herself in the saloon. Maybe you'd like to visit her later. Sure. The lady tells exciting stories. I know. She's my favorite writer. She told me that it's not much fun to write detective novels. She'd rather write something else, but her fans always want the same thing. They made her rich and famous. I told her to write what she wants to write. If it's good, someone will buy it. And if not, at least she had fun writing it. Then she smiled and nodded. She said it was a good idea. What are you playing there? I'm playing shuffleboard. At least I'm trying to. Never played it before. It's easy. Professor Lucien explained it to me. And who won? We didn't play. You didn't want to play with him, did you? Do you want to play a game with me? Sure. I think you'll have to explain the rules to me first. Okay. You play with the blue pucks and I play with the red ones. You have to push the pucks with this stick into the zone over there and score as many points as possible. Sounds easy. How many pucks do I have? Six. Now here comes the kicker. First it's your turn, then mine, and so on. But everyone is allowed to shoot the other person's pucks out of the zone. Then let's get started. Oh yeah. What are we playing for? Uh, I thought we'd just play for fun. That's boring. We have to bet something. Otherwise it isn't fun. You English people. So I'll bet my brand new slingshot. And you? I don't want to gamble. How about ice cream in Cairo? Okay. If I win, I get the slingshot. If I lose, I get an ice cream in Cairo. Hey! Never try to cheat Matt Miller. So, what do you say? Ice cream versus slingshot? Mm, all right. Let the games begin. Rats. Haha, <laughs> I win. That's one ice cream for me. You've been practicing. This time. Nah, I.
That's it. Oh, man. The athlete wins the day. One more time. No, that's enough for me. All right. Here. Are you sure? Gambling debts are debts of honor. I'll give it back to you when I don't need it anymore, okay? Okay, but make sure my mom doesn't catch you with it. She thinks it's dangerous. Miss Miller and the professor are talking intensely. She seems pretty relaxed, by her standards. Good morning, Miss Miller. Professor Lucien? Constable Zellner, how are you? I, I heard you passed out last night. Well, not quite. I was poisoned. Oh. That wretch! Who do you mean by that wretch? That stowaway? That new raven? The young man can't be the murderer. Constable Oliver had already apprehended him when the shot was fired. You mean... Whoever killed the Baroness is still on the loose. I think I should take my leave. I I'd like to rest for a while. One last question, Professor. Do you think the eye is well protected in the safe in Legrand's cabin? Of course it is. They assured me that it would take hours of work with heavy machinery to crack the safe. And if Legrand isn't in his cabin, Constable Oliver or I check that everything is in order every hour. I understand. I want to go back to my cabin. I'll see you later, Mary. Oh, of course. See you later. I... I didn't want to interrupt your conversation with Professor Lucien so abruptly. I, uh... I don't know what's wrong with him. Learning that there's still a burglar on board seemed to frighten him. He was so relaxed the whole time, and then... Hmm. And then, the stupid Swiss constable came by and made him anxious. Oh, I didn't mean that. No matter. I'm sure he'll calm down and come back soon enough. May I ask you a few questions? Of course. How is Matt? He seems happy enough. After all the commotion, he's already back to his old self again. But I haven't told him about the murder. That would be a bit too much for him. I think he's made of sterner stuff. I want to thank you again for what you did on the train. I wouldn't have known... Everything's fine. Think nothing of it. How was last night for you? It was awful. I was having a conversation with Edgar, uh, Professor Lucien, here on the forecastle. Then I wanted to look for the lady and went forward via the side deck. When I passed the Baroness's cabin, I heard a muffled scream. You heard a scream? Yes. I thought the Baroness probably had a fall. I went to the door and listened for a moment. Since I couldn't hear anything, I knocked on the door and asked whether she was all right. There was no answer. Interesting. And then? I, I didn't know what to do, so I tried to open the door. It was locked. I saw the Baroness's butler, Mr. Inch, on the forecastle. I thought he might have the key and went back. On the way, the Bobby crossed my path, and then Edgar, who wanted to check the safe. I explained the situation to him, and then the alarm went off. How did the scream sound? It was a short outcry, very frightened, as if someone had been startled. Was it a woman's voice? Yes, the voice was high. So it could have been a scream from the Baroness. Possibly because she discovered someone in her cabin. Possibly. That person might have threatened her with a weapon, so that she wouldn't scream for help. Oh, God. He waited until the coast was clear. Oh, please, stop it, Mr. Zellner. The Baroness's butler said that he was on the forecastle as well? Yes, he was standing on the other side of the deck, smoking a cigarette. 
Was he on the forecastle the whole time? Uh, I'm not sure. He was there, and later he was on the side deck with us. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, he, he looked after you while you were unconscious. He unbuttoned your collar and held your head while the doctor checked you. But you can't say for certain whether he came from the forecastle with you and Professor Lucien, or afterwards. Well, no. But where else could he have come from? Did you report that to Inspector Legrand? Yes, last night. He was very interested and took a lot of notes. But I wanted to look for Lady Westmacott, and he let me go without further delay. He said that he'd take down my full statement today. I understand. Do you think the man from the train also killed the Baroness, Constable Zellner? I don't know yet. It's horrible. Explosions, thieves, murderers. This isn't the right place for a lady and a little boy. You and Professor Lucien seem to be having a lively conversation. Oh, yes. He's an expert in ancient Egyptian art and preeminent in hieroglyphic research. He's the head of the Egyptian department in the British Museum, you know. And he's going to open an exhibition at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Right. Uh, for the eye. They had planned on exhibiting both jewels together for the first time in decades, but... That's not going to happen now, sadly. I think it's quite upsetting for him. We're working hard to ensure that at least one eye will be on display. I know. I'll ask Lady Westmacott if she'd like to participate in the opening of the exhibition. I think it would be good for her. And Professor Lucien will surely offer you a private tour. You're American, aren't you? That's correct. And you moved to England because of the job? I lived in England before. During the Second World War, I volunteered. I worked in a pharmacy on a U.S. base north of London. In a pharmacy? Interesting. Well, it was the war and everyone was sent where they could help best. Please, go on, Mrs. Miller. After the war, I studied music in London. I met my husband there. We married and went back to the States together. He was also American? No, English. But he said he had problems with his family, and he wanted to be as far from them as possible. And you gave up your studies for him? Well, yes, I did. Life as a single mother couldn't have been easy. It was pretty tough then. I worked from morning till night, and it was still only enough for the bare necessities. And I couldn't give Matt all the attention he needed. And then, Lady Westmacott entered your life. It was like an angel appeared to me. She must have offered me the position out of pity. I had no experience as a carer. She made me a generous offer. I couldn't believe it. And she really adores Matt. She's offered him a good education, and now he has every opportunity in life. An almost unbelievable story. I'm still afraid that it's a dream and that I'll wake up one day. How does it feel to work for such a world-famous person? The work is very interesting and varied, and it pays well, too. You are very lucky that the lady offered the position to you. I just hope she won't change her mind one day. What would become of Matt's education then? I really make an effort to measure up to Lady Westmacott's expectations, but sometimes I feel like I fall short. Lady Westmacott couldn't ask for a better companion. I'm saving up as much money as I can all the same. I'd do anything so that Matt doesn't have to give up his new life. Lady Westmacott dropped a hint on the train that she killed her hero, Partou. What did she mean by that? Oh, she must have meant the manuscript. Manuscript? She always takes it with her. It's an unpublished Partou novel. I once asked her why she never published it. She said that according to her will, the novel's only to be published after her death. And in it, Partou will be killed? Maybe. I've never read it. No one has. You better ask yourself. If you worked in a pharmacy, you would certainly know something about medicines and poisons. Everything is a potential poison constable. It depends on the dose. Have you ever heard of chloral hydrate? It's a tranquilizer, isn't it? I'm asking you. Well, Lady Westmacott also asked questions like that for her last novel. But since I've never wanted to kill anyone, I never bothered with things like strychnine and arsenic and all that. I could recommend something for a headache, a sore throat or a rash. That's kind of you, but there's really no need. I'll be seeing you, Miss Miller. Constable? Ahem. <laughs> 
hen. Uh, what do you want? Inspector Legrand is questioning the first of the passengers in the saloon. And? It will be hours before he gets to the stowaway. And? We'll save time if I question him. We'd also save time if you stopped asking me the same things over and over again. I will not let you in. What time is it, by the way? Got an appointment? No, but I'm hungry. Go and get yourself something. I'll mind the door in the meantime. Aha. Uh -huh. You could bring me something, though. So, what do you want to eat? Oh, anything. An apple or something like that. There's ham and eggs in the saloon. <laughs> Can't touch them. Why not? Sergeant Mills. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for the fitness of the unit, and he'll chew you out if he thinks you've packed on a few pounds. I see. Leave it with me. Yeah, thanks. Small, even stones, probably. Whatever Constable Oliver wants, he's getting ham and eggs. And just a pinch of salt for our friendly constable. Good. Constable Oliver. Huh? Ham and eggs, piping hot. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't read. Really. I don't see anyone here who'd rebuke you. It was a hard night. Yeah, true. Oh, mm, delicious. <laughs> mm, just enough salt. <laughs> mm. Oh, that was good of you. Cheers. You don't expect me to wash your dirty dishes as well, do you? Oh, no, of course not, Your Majesty. Oh, that was a proper meal and no mistake. The constable is quenching his thirst with a bottle of water. You'll have a problem when it's empty, but I can't wait that long. Constable Oliver is drinking the water he brought along. Without it, he'd get very thirsty. I guess I'll stow away now. Whatever his... Stones make perfect ammunition for the slingshot. Now... You mean, someone shot at you? Yes, well, no, I, mean, I don't know. Didn't you notice anything? I was riveted by the fantastic view. We Swiss aren't used to seeing the horizon like this. And my bottle's broken too. 
Oh, I don't believe this. Could you, uh, could you bring me something to drink? Those salmon eggs were pretty salty. I'm sorry. I have to proceed with my investigations. Goodbye. Let's see how long he can resist his thirst. Not long at all. Nervous? I would be too in your position. Who are you? My name is Adil, and you are... Constable Zellner. Why did you sneak onto the ship, Adil? I wanted to go back home. You're Egyptian? There's no work for me in Italy. I want to see my family again. And since you don't have money, you stowed away. So what if I did? So, it was you who knocked me out. Me? <laughs> Never! No? Where were you when I was attacked? Well, I couldn't take anything with me on this trip, so I uh, snuck into the kitchen and took some canned goods. Interesting. And how do you know when I was attacked? Well, I, I thought it was yesterday, shortly before we set sail. I take this bump personally. What were you searching for on deck last night? I was hiding the whole evening. I wanted to go out and get some fresh air, see the stars. But then suddenly, they were looking for me. Were you in one of the cabins? No! Did you see anyone on the deck or on the roof? No. And after we arrested you? The English policeman put me in this cell. Then he left. I've been here ever since. And you didn't notice anything along the way? No, nothing. What about the gunshot? Didn't you hear it? Uh, yes. The English policeman had already arrested me. We heard a bang and looked around. And then? Then? The Bobby was in a hurry to get rid of me. He almost pushed me down the stairs and locked me in here. He left, and, and then a short time later, the alarm went off. Constable Oliver wasn't with you anymore when the alarm went off? No. I was scared that the ship would sink with me sitting here like a rat in a trap. It's hard for me to believe a single word of your story. Because I'm a foreigner? Because you seem to have learned our language in the space of a day. Accent free. Believe what you want. Who paid you to distract us? What? You went for a walk around the deck and let yourself be seen. Everyone goes off hunting you, and in the meantime, your partner shoots the Baroness in peace. No, I didn't do anything. I didn't want to distract anyone. I, I just want to go home. You're a liar, and a bad one at that. But sir, I'm telling the truth. And I'm the Raven. Inspector Legrand will deal with you. He's lying like a cheap rug. But he probably doesn't know anything about the murder. Very disappointing. So I have to keep searching. What interests me most is the shot that was fired here in the cargo hold last night. Whoever fired the shot hit the crate. Did the shooter just want to intimidate me? Or maybe he needed the bullet? Can't see anything. If the bullet is still stuck in the wood, it's too deep to reach with my fingers. No, the bullet hole is too small for the tongs. The cargo hold also seems to serve as a changing room for the crew, at least for the ones who don't wear white uniforms. Stroke of luck. The lock is open. Hmm. Oil stained overalls. And here, an old toolbox. It's been through a lot. Hardly any paint, dented, and the lid is held shut by a wire. 
I'll take it with me. Hmm. Some wrenches, a bit of wire wool, an oily cloth, and here, a screwdriver. thinks the bullet is still in the wood. I'm not a weapon specialist, but at first sight I'd say that this bullet looks exactly the same as the one Dr. Gebhardt gave me for Legrand. That would mean that the murderer also fired a shot here in the cargo hold before the murder. But why? Did they just want to make sure the old guns still worked? Or was it something else? And did the bullet really come from the same gun? I can only check that in the Grand's cabin. Biscuit. I noticed that the door was unguarded. I just wanted to make sure that everything was all right. Tell it to Legrand. He's expressly forbidden anyone to speak to the witness before he does. All right. Let's go to Legrand and tell him what happened. You fell asleep and then you left the door unguarded. Well, are we going? Hmm? Uh, no, but don't try it again. Of course not. Hello, Matt. Hi there. S Matt. What? Here's your slingshot back. Really? Thanks. You're welcome, but... You should put Constable Oliver on the list of people who better not see it. I... ah... Uh, I understand. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Good man. I have to leave again. Sure. The lock isn't especially secure. I should be able to open it with the wire from the cargo hold.
I'm out of practice. The lock isn't especially secure, I should...
There we go. A lock, master and son. Tough to crack. If I wanted to steal the eye, I'd concentrate on getting the three keys. If everything goes according to plan, the first time this monster is opened will be in the museum in Cairo. Fingers crossed. Neatly folded and unused. Legrand hasn't slept since we cast off, nor on the train. Legrand must have taken and developed the photos himself. He even made copies and enlargements. He seems to be prepared for everything, with access to more resources than a normal detective. I'm sure that the... Another alarm. It was tripped at some point, but there's no way to determine when. Legrand must have taken them yesterday at the crime scene. Yes, that's how we found her yesterday, I think. I wasn't really myself at the time. Hmm, no. Nothing suspicious. Hmm. Yes, the bed, the blood spot. The spot on the sheet is much bigger than the one on the mattress. There's blood on the blanket as well. A lot of blood, I'd say. The blanket and the sheet are gone. I guess they're in the medical center. A rough diagram of the ship. Legrand marked the Baroness's cabin. Seems like he didn't turn up anything else of note. This photo provides an overview of the crime scene. Shot in her sleep. She didn't feel a thing. She went to sleep and never woke up. A masterpiece. Forensic teams use kits like these. They're placing increasing importance on the preservation of evidence. But not in Switzerland yet. It's a small lab used to conduct simple analysis on site. All right, what have we got here? Half of the tools in this box will be interesting for an archaeologist as well. Actually, forensics and archaeology are really quite similar to each other. The goal is to find out what happened, whether a few hours ago or a few centuries ago. I'm sure Legrand could work magic in this alchemist's lab. Me, I'm just awestruck. What's this? Oh, how practical. A hermetically sealed cotton swab for collecting samples. I'll take it. Good Lord. Good Lord. For forensics in the woods or the open country, I suppose. No use on a ship. A small glass bowl for mixing chemicals. Fingerprints are overrated. Smart thieves wear gloves, or they make sure that there are too many fingerprints at the crime scene to check them all. Good Lord. Aha! This is some kind of inventory list. For each chemical, it lists the chemical composition and a short comment on how to use it. And here's a list of the most important procedures. Fingerprints, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gunshot residue, 
blood? I don't have to analyze the pillow and feathers to determine whether there's gunshot residue. I can smell it. And I don't have any other clues at the moment. The booklet will be useful once I have something to analyze. There's nothing written on the bottle. I suppose it's some sort of stimulant, legal or not. The Grand has been awake for at least 30 hours straight, maybe more. I shudder to think what kind of side effects this stuff might have. A policeman on a murder investigation should have his wits about him. The risk that he could miss evidence or endanger himself and others is too high. Legrand's file on the Raven. Centimeters thick, but totally useless. We're not dealing with the Raven. Why can't he see that? Our man is ruthless, a bomber, and quite probably a murderer. This file belongs in a museum. It's history. The inspector should concentrate on the present. This is the pipe from the cargo hold. Legrand seems to have inspected it for fingerprints. I can still make out the powder. Hmm, no. Nothing to see on the end of the pipe that the attacker held. Either he wore gloves, or he cleaned the pipe. Aha, that's the bullet the doctor removed from the Baroness's corpse. A microscope. Looks like the one that Lutz Reichinger uses in his pharmacy. Just more modern. There's nothing on the slide, and therefore, nothing to see. for a comparison. All right. Thank you. 
What could that mean?